ओके ओ मज्ञानाति मृंदस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकय चक्षुरुं मिलितम् येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः नमः ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामिनि नामने नमस्ते सारस्वत देवे गौरवाणी प्रचार निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य ओके सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग द सिक्स्थ कैंटो एंड हेयर इंद्रा ही हैज he has given one benediction to water and also one curse. Uh, that was the idea. The context is Indra is has the sin of killing a Brahmana and he is trying to distribute those sins to other living entities. And and with that he's giving a benediction. He didn't he didn't really neutralize the sin. He, he accepted it and then he's distributing to other living beings including water so he, the, here in the verse it says dravye bhuyo varena apaha of uh, dravye means of all things uh, apa means water so he was distributing this sins to so many dravye like trees and women and now he distributes it to the water and uh, the benediction he gives is dravya bhuyo dravya bhuyo means anywhere uh, if water is mixed with any substance dravya bhuyo means increase the quantity will increase the idea is uh, in ayurveda it is said if you mix anything in water the the, the the substance doesn't lose its potency and it doesn't change its potency if you mix, mix anything with anything the properties change but if you mix water the properties will not change rather the volume of that substance will increase and that is why krishna says rasoham sukantya i am the taste of water because water is tasteless Water is tasteless because Krishna is a taste of water and people don't know Krishna so they cannot taste the taste of water. Srila Prabhupada in one of the interviews they were asking Prabhupada how can we remember Krishna 24 hours? Prabhupada said when you drink water remember the taste of water is Krishna. But taste of water is a tasteless isn't it? So, so the idea is uh, so the idea is Water is <coughs> having no taste because because we don't realize that because we are not self-realized so we cannot taste the taste of water uh, and that is why Vashila Prabhupada could Shila Prabhupada could understand that the, the, the taste of water is Krishna but empirically objectively looking uh, the water doesn't have any taste. Uh, and that is why it's a unique property of water that if it is mixed with any substance, the substance quantity will increase, but the point is the properties don't decrease, the properties remain the same. If you see uh, uh, Atharveda or any Vedas, many diseases, uh, Atharveda it mentions the cure for many diseases, it says that many of the diseases can be treated solely by water. Water is also a medicine for so many diseases if we know how to use it and uh, of course Srila Srila Prabhupada was expert in hydrotherapy Prabhupada I think he wrote a book also before when he was practicing medicine on how to treat diseases through water he wrote a book by the way so here it is mentioned about water apaha and Indra he gave a benediction to water okay uh, that if you are mixed with any substance the substance quantity which shall increase but then it also gave uh, he, Indra also distributed he also gave one fourth of a sin of killing a Brahmana to the water uh, Indra killed this uh, Vishrup he, he cut his head uh, because because Vishrup was uh, was was giving some portion of the yagya to demons as well as demigods but the yagya was done for demigods for the betterment of demigods but 
because Indra lost the battle with demons, so he wanted to win them back. But Vishnu, he was dividing the results, and Indra came to know, and out of fear, he cut his head. And uh, so one fourth sin he gave to water, and the effect was tasu but Buddha fena bhyam. One fourth of the sin of the water, uh, Prabhupada says, therefore there are bubbles and foam in the water. When one collects water, these should be avoided. So whenever we see bubbles and foam in the water, this means that water has to be discarded. That's, that is Ayurvedic knowledge. That means that water has become contaminated. So he gave this, water ideally doesn't become contaminated at any time. In, in, in Veda dictionary, uh, if you see the synonym of a purity, pure, one of the synonym of pure is honey, ghee, that's also considered pure, milk, milk is considered pure, of course, devotee's heart, that's also pure, and water is also considered pure. That's why you see in all the, all the uh, worship, uh, before doing any worship, we do achmana. And that's by simply by water, one drop of water. And that makes the person pure. So water in itself has a purifying capacity. And that is why there are so many hymns dedicated to Abha. In Vedic, in Vedic uh, word view, uh, Agni is praised. Varuna is also praised a lot. Varuna, Agni, uh, there are so many hymns for Varuna because water is considered to be pure. In fact, the oceans and the rivers are considered to be pure, pure and holy. All the rivers, regardless of the fact where they are, they are considered holy. All the oceans, regardless of fact where they are, they are considered holy because there is water. So that's, that's, the, that's what Indra did. But the question is, Indra got the, killing, the sin of killing Brahmana. Here the point, one of the point which is, uh, which is raised, one of the question raised is, Indra, Indra is a devotee by the way. I mean to say, uh, we think Indra is not a pure devotee, but at least according to Madhva Sampradha, he is a pure devotee. At least he is a much better devotee than all of us. He is a devotee. So why did Krishna didn't, uh, 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 so why didn't he neutralize his sins? By doing bhakti. Now the answer to this question is, uh, I, he could have done bhakti and utilized his sin, but he didn't do that because uh, he knew that the uh, was that seventh offense, naam no baladesi papa buddhi, to counteract sins uh, on the strength of devotion is an offense. So, although he was a devotee, he didn't he didn't counteract sinful reactions using the power of his devotion. He would have done that, but he didn't do that. But that would have been, uh, that would have been an offense. But another question is, why is he distributing those sins to other living and to other people? One fourth sins went to the land, one fourth sins to the trees, one fourth sins to the women, and one fourth sins to water. Why, why, why is distributing? Why doesn't he really accept those sins and suffer for them? That's one question. Second question is, why didn't God, why didn't Krishna, if he is such a pure devotee? Indra is such a pure devotee that whenever he does sacrifice in his heaven, it is said in Vrat Bhagavatam, Vrithanathan Goswami says, that Vishnu personally comes to accept the offerings. Like he personally comes and he accepts offerings in his hand. Because Vishnu is, is actually younger brother of Indra, as Vamandev. Uh, he accepts the position of younger brother of Indra and that's why one of the name of Vishnu is Upendra. So he personally comes and he accepts the offerings in his hand. Indra, Indra gives his offerings in the hand and in front of Indra, uh, Vishnu eats those offerings. It's not just abstract what we do here. He eats and that is why there is a Sakheras between Indra and Vishnu. Indra is in Sakheras according to Sanatana Goswami. He's in a friendly relationship. Uh, and uh, Sanatan Goswami says many times Vishnu comes and he, uh, Indra talks with him and he jokes with him and, it, and he takes counseling from him uh, what to do, what not to do. And that's the relationship with him. So why didn't Vishnu 
uh, forgive him through his own mercy. I mean, okay, fine. Indra didn't uh, Indra didn't counteract his sins through through devotion, but but Krishna would have equally, or Vishnu would have equally forgiven. Okay, fine. You know, by my mercy, your sins are reduced. Don't worry about that. We always hear that for a devotee, God reduces the sins. If a devotee has to have a major accident, he will just have some nail pricked on in his feet due to mercy of God. So where is the mercy of God in the case of Indra? Now here the point is, the, uh, the answer to this question is, uh, we have to understand what do we mean by justice. That's a very important point there. Justice and mercy. Now, remember Indra is a king himself and he is also justice personified in the heavenly realm. A king has to be uh, completely on, a king has to be perfectly, uh, has, to, has to rule the kingdom through justice, otherwise he is no longer a king. So in his case, there has to be justice. Now what is justice? In Sanskrit, justice is called as Ritam, Rita law, justice and the rule is uh, a sin and an offense uh, uh, cannot be uh, pardoned, sin and offense cannot be pardoned. Justice says that there should be punishment for sin and an offense, there, sh there must be punishment. Uh, uh, the person who is doing sin and offense, he might feel guilty, he can feel guilty and that guilt helps in not to repeat those sins and, and of, that offense, but the punishment has to be given. Why? Because if we don't give punishment, then three things happen. First, you encourage the person who is doing an offense. He'll repeat it again and again. Secondly, you encourage others to do that sin because that person is not punished. So it gives a leeway for others. Okay, we can also do it and we can escape. And the most important point is, if the person is not punished, then justice becomes weaker. It becomes weak. People then no longer take the laws as strong laws. They think laws and this punish their justice is a weak. So then they can do anything. They lose a fear of justice. That's a very important point. So because of three reasons, uh, sin and offense must be punished. They cannot be foregone. Okay, fine. Through mercy, uh, we relieve you from sin and offenses. No, they have to be punished. But what happens through the mercy of God? Through the mercy of God, our offenses or sins, it's not that our offenses or sins will not be punished and we can forego them. That will not happen. We will be punished accordingly. Whatever is, uh, whatever is just. But the point is, what happens is through God's mercy, when we are undergoing those punishments, through His mercy, we will learn many things rather than uh, we, 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 uh, we uh, de-learning things and becoming depressed and becoming confused, we will learn many things and we will elevate. That's the role of mercy of God. The mercy of God doesn't reduce your sufferings or reduce your uh, your punishment that doesn't happen although the, the glory of devotion is glory of holy name is uh, that it reduces the sufferings it is said if you chant the holy names your sufferings will be reduced but that sufferings will not be reduced in the sense that that suffering per se will be reduced the experience of those sufferings will be reduced the sufferings will come but you will not experience the the sorrow and the pain of those sufferings rather you will experience joy in those sufferings because you will be learning many things. That's the idea. That's the usual uh, take of Krishna. Of course, extraordinary mercy of Krishna. He can definitely interfere with laws of karma and he can, he can reduce punishments, he can reduce sins, but that's not the usual course. He doesn't do that. Because if he keeps on doing that, then the justice becomes weaker. And the, and the, and the weakness of justice will be contributed to the mercy. Mercy has to be blamed for making justice weak and that will be a realist, real problem there. So <laughs> Krishna doesn't want mercy to be blamed to make justice weak. That's not the point. And that is why when Krishna deals with devotees, uh, there is always a tussle between justice and mercy. 
is always a tussle. So how to if we if we are too merciful, justice becomes weak. If we are if we are too just, then there is no mercy. It's a problem there. So how Krishna handles the whole situation is he lets the punishment then and, and and the hardships come. He doesn't interfere with that. So he can say, okay, the justice has been done. But out of his mercy, within he makes the devotee strong within his heart. And he gives him the ability to understand why he is being punished. And he gives the ability to him to correct himself. That's what he's doing within the heart. Dadami, buddhi, yogam, tam. That's what he does. And that's why Bhishvitama, you see. Bhishvitama is a mahajan. Why, why he suffered? Uh, uh, why he suffered? You know, like he, was, he was pierced in an entire body with his arrows. And Krishna asked what happened and he said, well, 50, 50 lives back, he pricked a, a small insect in his whole body and that reaction came in this life as he is being pricked in his whole body with arrows of Arjuna. He got the reaction in spite of the fact he is a Mahajana. But through the mercy of God, he didn't forget Krishna in that whole experience. That was Krishna's mercy. So, for condition being, we think mercy of God is, okay, we, our problems will be reduced, our sufferings will be reduced. We think on a very mundane level. But as far as pure devotees, they don't think like that. They Rather, they pray to Krishna, Krishna, let me suffer for my own karmas. They pray, let me suffer for my own karmas. I don't want my karmas to be nullified by the power of a holy name. But please, let me remember you in all conditions. So, a devotee doesn't interfere within the plan of Krishna, within the cosmic order. He doesn't want to destroy the, uh, the quality of justice of Krishna. If you pray to Krishna, Krishna, please help me, you know, I have so many problems. And please, please, I am feeling so much suffering and uh, please reduce this so that I can do bhakti nicely. Well, Krishna can do that. But what is happening is, we are actually interfering in the cosmic law and cosmic justice and we are making Krishna weak in the eyes of people. People will say, well, okay, Krishna reduced his suffering, so his justice is weak and that devotee doesn't want. That's why devotee prays, let me suffer my own karmas, no problem. Why he is praying that? Because he doesn't want to take service from God and he doesn't want to make God, Krishna, look weak in front of others doesn't want him to look weak, that he has to give special favor to somebody and break all the laws. He doesn't want him to look like that. He wants Krishna to look as perfect justice doer. That's all he wants, isn't it? He is a perfect justice doer. People will praise him. He, in Vishnu Sahasranam, there are so many names for Krishna where, where the praise is given to Krishna. He's a perfect uh, justice supplier. He's, he perfectly does justice. What's the name? Is there any name like that? I Justice. forgot. Justice. Uh, oh, one of the name of Vishnu is Ritambara. Ritambara. Bhara means full. Ritam matlab justice. He's full of justice. And I have to check Vishnu says, I just forgot. Nyayadhish. He's also called Nyayadhish. And Vishnu says, there are so many names. I just couldn't get it. But anyway. So, Nyayadhish also means he is a lord of justice. So, uh, that is why a devotee doesn't want favors from Krishna. Favors from Krishna can help you, but it doesn't help God. It doesn't help Krishna. It makes Krishna look weak and fool in front of everybody. He is going out of the way. Of course, <clears throat> out of his own will, Krishna can go out of the way to help his devotees. That's his discretion. Whenever he wants. But devotee doesn't want that. To pray like that. And devotee says, Krishna, you don't have to go out of the way to help me. Please don't do that. Don't do that. Don't take pains for me. Don't serve me. Let me serve you. And let me suffer my own karmas. Whatever I have in my lot. And that is why Indra, he didn't... Uh, Indra didn't want Vishnu to reduce his sins and that is why his sins were the same. Is there any word for justice? 
Vishnu's name. No. Not able to find. Okay. So, uh, uh, so Indra, Indra. That is why in, in Indra. First of all, Indra didn't use bhakti to neutralize his sins. Second, even Krishna didn't neutralize his sins because Indra didn't want him to neutralize his sins. He didn't. He's a. He's a. He's a. No, you, I didn't find. Huh? I didn't find. Okay. Google also it's not coming. His. His, his whole, uh, this this whole incident of Indra doesn't show Indra. Uh, Indra is a foolish person. He's not a foolish person. He's a he's a pure devotee. That's what he shows. Now the question is why Indra is distributing sins to others? Why is not like if he's such a pure devotee? Okay, let me suffer my own karmas. And so, uh, but he's distributing these karma sinful reactions to to land, water, female and water. Why is doing that? If he is such a pure devotee, he can suffer equally those sins. But he is not doing that. Because Indra knows that he is a devotee, but at the same time Indra knows he is also a king. And it is said in Dharma Shastras, said in scriptures, the king must protect himself for the benefit of others. That's the idea. A king who doesn't protect himself is actually harming his subjects. Because without a king, there's anarchy. There's nobody to. There's nobody to, really, rule them and guide them. So Indra is not protecting himself. Indra is protecting people of heaven who are under him. So that is why, when a king protects himself, it is not a selfish act. When a king protects himself, he's protecting the whole country and the whole kingdom. Because. A king is identified with the kingdom. Is it? He is inseparable with them. So that is why Indra didn't want it to suffer the sinful reactions. Because if he starts suffering the sinful reactions, already they are weak. Already they already they are defeated by demons. And now Indra is also gone. So everything will be gone. Everything will be finished. Demons will know. Okay, now Indra is also gone. So we let's destroy heaven forever. Indra didn't want that. So he wanted to distribute it to others. So you see, you, you see the point. What Indra is showing? Indra is showing that a devotee, is, a devotee must also be intelligent. He should not be fool. Foolish devotees are simply a burden on Krishna. That, that's what, what I think one of the uh, yeah Bhakti Sandha says. Thakur used to say, "Foolish devotees are burden on Krishna." Uh, in, in, in modern age, foolish devotees might be equated with simple devotees, but they are a burden on Krishna. That's why Prabhupada said, we need devotees with Kshatriya spirit uh, and Brahmanical nature. We want devotees with Kshatriya spirit that who can do activities and Brahmanical nature, very intelligent. So that they don't become burden on Krishna. That's why Bhakti Sandra used to say that in our body of Vaishnavism, uh, we, uh, we, we can develop a relationship with Krishna as a friend, as a lover, as a father, but never as a son. In Vatsalaras, it can't be that we are son and he is God. And he was referring to Christianity, by the way. Christ used to say, my father, I'm, I'm his son, no? Bhakti Sandha says, that's not what our take is. Because if we are son and he is father, then he has to take care of us. And that's a big problem. So he said that we want to become father of Krishna so that we take care of him. It's, it's a very different conception, Gaudiya Vaishnava conception. So, uh, so Indra, Indra is not a fool. He is a devotee and he did according, he did what has to be done. He, he didn't use his devotion. He didn't let Krishna look weak in front of others. He accepted the sins. But it's not necessary that you have to suffer them. Just like Devarshi Narad said, so one of the snake was there. There was a snake and uh, and uh, and uh, it was very violent, it used to kill people. So Narad Muni went and he said to snake, why are you killing people, you know, like you are... So the snake said, well, these people, they, they want to kill me, so I have to kill them in my defense. Narad Muni says, no, you can, um, uh, you can simply, um, uh, so you don't kill them, you tolerate, become a devotee. The snake became a devotee and then after some time Narad Muni came and the snake was completely wounded. He said, what happened? So then the snake said, well, you said to me to be tolerant and then now students are like, like throwing stones at me and I am completely wounded. Narad Muni says, you are a fool. 
I told you not to kill them, but you can always raise your hood and make them fearful so that they don't beat you up. So that's some common sense. So it's not necessary that you suffer sinful reactions. For example, we don't pray to Krishna. Krishna, please elevate our sinful reactions. So out of sin, suppose when we, when we, when we become diseased, we accept disease, okay, it's our karma. But we are not foolish that we can continue suffering our disease. You can take medicines and cure yourself. That's what is happening with Indra. You can cure yourself. But when we cure ourselves, the consciousness should be that you are curing yourself not for the benefit of yourself. You are curing yourself because his body belongs to Krishna. That's the idea. Indra is trying to distribute sins not to save himself. He could have suffered sins. That's no problem for him. But to save others, he did that. So we are taking medicine not to save ourselves, but to save this body which is a gift of Krishna and it belongs to him. That's the whole idea there. So that's the idea. So that's why many devotees say, okay, well, when you become diseased, you should tolerate and uh, that's mercy of God. Why do we want to take medicines? Uh, you should rather take the holy names of God, isn't it? And Krishna will decide that's foolishness. First of all, we don't want to take holy name and, and ask favor of holy name that he should treat our disease. Second of all, uh, we, we, we don't want Krishna to decide <laughs> that our disease should stay or go. That's, that's a wrong take. We are trying, trying to take service from Krishna. It's rather the opposite thing. When we become diseased, we do all kinds of medicines, cure our disease, and we don't give Krishna a chance to think about us and serve us. That's all. It's neither necessary to serve, it's neither necessary to suffer the sinful reactions and it's neither necessary also to not to actually find a way to get actually free from them. We don't use bhakti to become free of sinful reactions but we can use other means, that's all. For example, medicines or some, of course we don't use astrology. Uh, there are certain remedial measures in astrology to free ourselves from sinful reactions. But we don't use that uh, because in those remedial measures, there are deities and hosts and you know universal uh, uh, planets involved, and we don't want uh, to go through that route because that will destroy our faith. Because then there are people involved there, so then we might tend to think, okay, okay, we might tend to think, okay, uh, okay, that's also powerful, and we got help from there, and. Uh, Faith and love will get distributed. But we can do medicines, that's all. That's okay. <laughs> there's no question. There's no person involved in that. So there is no question of transfer of faith in a person. And an exchange of emotions, that's the whole idea. So uh, that's why Indra's actions are perfectly justified. That's my whole point here. His distribution of sins is not his cowardliness. That's the whole point. I might suffer so what? And it's, not, and, and it's neither selfishness. He's not being selfish. He's trying to do everything according to religious scriptures and dharma and religious principles. That's what he's trying to do. And he's teaching us equally that you accept whatever comes, but you can find a way to get rid of it just to serve Krishna more. That's all. That's it. That's all. That's uh, Gaur Kishwara's Babaji, he got blind. And... Uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur told him that and God Swabhaji used to give some money to Bhakti Vinod Thakur to keep like some people used to come and give him donations so he used to, he used to give Bhakti Vinod Thakur to keep in the bank so uh, I think they uh, over the period of time Bhakti Vinod Thakur collected 100 rupees like 100 rupees of God Swabhaji at that time 100 rupees is like 100 years back 100 rupees is how much? Like 10 lakh something something like that 10 lakh 10 lakh, God Swabhaji had 10 lakh rupees <laughs> with him. He was Babaji, but he, he owned 10 lakh rupees, <laughs> which was kept in the custody of Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his bank. So he got blind due to, due to not eating properly and doing all, all kind of austerities. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, okay, let's, let's go to Calcutta and you have money and you can treat yourself and get your eyes back. God Swabhaji said, no, uh, no, actually it's good if I become blind. I will not be able to see this illusion and I will be saved from illusion. That was his answer. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur 
uh, told him well uh, if well okay that's the point but you can equally go to calcutta we can treat your eyes and gorsi babaji had a different take on life uh, but we don't follow gorsi das babaji we follow bhakti vinod thakur and bhakti vinod thakur was really interested to get a treatment that was the idea bhakti sandh sosi thakur he had hernia you know that he had hernia he had a he had a hernia big hernia and he used to wear the belt hernial belt so many devotees asked him you get an operation done bhakti sandh said well that's okay you know i wanted to get an operation done but uh, and i knew i know that it has to be treated otherwise there were complications but i don't want because i know that uh, they will kill me while being operated <laughs> he was very he was very fearful that they'll kill him because there already there were so many enemies so somebody can bribe the doctors and say you know while operation you kill him that's why i'm not getting operated so there was a reason otherwise he would have equally got operated bhakti and thakur bhakti and thakur they were they were consulting doctors when they were sick Uh, but they were not bhakti no thakur once got a ex- lot of headache while he was writing the book jaiva dharm it was read jaiva dharm it's a very complex book and complete book he got a big headache for a month and one one tantric he came he said okay you 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 take this mantra of durga and you will get treated tomorrow that no problem bhakti no thakur says said sorry i don't want this mantra because there is a deity involved there they can be exchange of emotions but he was taking uh, uh, he was taking allopathy ayurved and all these kind of treatments so indra, indra is teaching us the same thing indra is teaching the same thing uh, we can apply remedial measures when there is a problem when there is a problem in life think properly apply strategies there is a whole niti shastra there to help you navigate at the time of problem apply your brain how can this problem can be solved don't just foolishly suffer in the problems that will be foolishness that is mercy of krishna so we have to suffer no that's foolishness because this life doesn't belong to you we are in service of god and we have to same time and energy vidur ji he says in vidur niti do everything to remain healthy and save your energy and time so that you can serve krishna it's there in scriptures bhagavatam also says kama se na indre priti labho jivete avata to 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 protect your health that's not sense gratification if there's a problem in life to apply some solutions that's not sense gratification that's okay fine but we don't ask god to help us in this we neither use holy name to help us in this that's what indra is doing Indra got sinful reactions. He didn't ask Krishna. He didn't do. He didn't start chanting holy name. Okay, we leave it on Krishna. And Krishna will decide. No. He rather said, Krishna, it's okay. I got sins. You don't interfere in this. I don't even want you to interfere in this whole kind of scenario. It's my problem. I did this. I'll solve this. And he thought of a solution and he distributed the sins and it's done. So that that's the idea. Uh, you can. you can have solutions you can have remedial uh, measures in terms of medicines or something where 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 no deities are involved no bhoot prayat or some people are involved and uh, we can do your best and then leave on krishna sri prabhupada always said do your best and then leave on krishna prabhupada always said that prabhupada didn't say just leave on krishna and don't try anything he didn't say that that's what indra is doing and indra is showing how a devotee should act indra is teaching us how the body should live uh, by his actions so nobody should think you know indra is a uh, indra is like he, he did such wrong thing he did sin he killed and now he's in trouble and he's not a devotee he's a mixed devotee it's not like that bhagavatam is not talking of anything besides pure devotion by the way uh, there are incidences of mixed devotion there but um, Uh, Bhagavatam is simultaneously talking about mixed devotion and pure devotion. So, if you if you really think about it, externally it might look mixed devotion, but internally everything is pure devotion because Bhagavatam is what's that? Uh, Nirmalam. Uh, first three verses of Bhagavatam says Bhagavatam is without any mal. Projita kai to vatra. Projita kai to vatra. There is there is no cheating in this Bhagavatam. 
सो दैट्स वॉट वी लर्न फ्रॉम दिस होल इंसिडेंस ओके हरे कृष्ण शिला प्रभुपात की जैनी क्वेश्चन एनी बडी वॉन्ट्स टू आस्क एनी थिंग Yeah, I can hear you. Let me. Uh, one minute, please. There's so many hands. Ah, hi, Krishna Prabhu Ji, from the Pranama Guru Station, your Prabhu Adam Guru Maharaj. Prabhu Ji, one quick question: Like, is it is it possible now to give our sin to someone else, like Indra did? Is it possible? <laughs> no, we can't give. Indra can do that. We can't do that. It's not possible. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise people will do sin and they will distribute like. In in Kali Yuga, it's not possible, by the way. First of all, at all. Hello, Prabhuji. Hmm. Go ahead, Prabhuji. Uh, hi. Ah, uh, this is Supriya. Ah, uh, Prabhuji wanted to ask. Ah. Uh, What are the uh, sufferings that liberated soul goes through? For a person who is already on the liberated platform, what are sufferings they experience? What are sufferings they experience? What sufferings they experience? Soul which is on the liberated platform. Well, they if they become sick, they will experience suffering. Like Prabhupad got a heart attack, or his kidney failed. So that there is a pain can, and suffering. Can we consider that as a, a reaction? The, yeah, that that's reaction of their disciples. How do we justify that it's a disciples' reaction? Because on the liberated platform, there is a no karma that affects the soul. No, 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 no. On liberated on liberated platform, if you if you take a responsibility of a guru, then the laws of karma will start. and uh, that that that's the case where guru has to take the reactions of the disciples at least one by eighth of the sins of disciples will go to the guru he can't avoid that if that is the case uh, that is suppose after becoming a guru i uh, take the um, the karma of my disciples why would anyone would choose to be a guru in that case well uh, that's an act of mercy to help others they are taking a risk and to help others they take that risk that's all okay anybody else yes also yeah gail mataji please go ahead mataji if you are prem mataji if you are done with your question yeah i'm done she is there thank you prabhu hmm she is not there hi krishna prabhu hari yeah. krishna yeah, yeah i was not able to unmute before okay um yeah a few questions on, on this yeah. last point about you know guru taking karma we've heard on this form form itself that um from another speaker that it doesn't actually make sense that krishna would require the guru to take the karma of his disciple and the rationale was given that you know why would krishna punish his pure devotee by having him take that karma when the his pure devotee is trying to serve Krishna Yeah but Shila Prabhupada said himself said when he met an accident that I am suffering because of you because you your sinful reactions are transferred to me and that's that's given in dharma shastras a king a, a husband in the family a leader in any group and the guru has to partake the karmas of people who are dependent on him that's the rule of dharma that's the rhythm that's a cosmic law when anybody is dependent on you you have to take the reaction and sinful reactions of them and so okay but but we follow 
bhakti shastra na dharma no 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 it's not like that bhakti shastra doesn't mean that dharma shastra has become useless and they are like obsolete it's not like that dharma bhakti is to do with spirit soul and dharma shastra is to do with this cosmos and both work together both are working together and that's the, actually that's the beauty of bhagavad gita by the way bhagavad gita krishna says sar dharan paritajya but that he doesn't mean you abandon all dharma he said abandon all attachment to religious principles but you have to follow religious principles otherwise like so 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 for example let me ask you if you are following bhakti and if you eat poison will you die or not tell me well it depends upon what krishna wants no 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 poison is going to work and the person is going to die if 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 i am a devotee if, if i am driving a car and if i if i if well, i mean krishna has is taking personal charge right so yeah but the devotee should not be foolish to give krishna some service no 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 i mean to say i'm not saying if it that's if which we're saying that the devotee intentionally yeah 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 if it happens you know so he's taking service from krishna if he intentionally you know walks into danger and then expects krishna to save him but in the case where you know it just happens yeah but you know why why you know what uh, kirtanand maharaj uh, kirtanand swami he started giving initiation when prabhupad was present and he got a lot of headaches that's there in letters and somebody wrote to prabhupada he wrote to prabhupada i'm getting a lot of headaches and i'm like getting mad and prabhupada said stop initiating because you are getting karmas of disciple you are making you are not so powerful to handle that so that's the rule now the now uh, so that's why i was talking justice justice is the law will work but krishna's mercy is the devotee doesn't uh, so many karma reactions will come but due to krishna those karma reactions will many will will be, will be neutralized and some the devotee has to uh, suffer for those reactions why to because krishna wants to glorify his devotees that's the idea um that's his intelligence is far surpasses he can utilize all sins that's okay prabhupad was very powerful so all the sins which were transferred they were getting neutralized by yeah, krishna's mercy so that's why we don't see prabhupad falling sick 24 hours and throughout his own career that is didn't happen in the last days he became sick now why because krishna wanted him to become sick and to show that prabhupad said krishna wants prabhupad they asked prabhupad why you are sick you are pure devotee prabhupad said because krishna is showing you how to die and krishna is showing you how to remember him in sufferings so krishna lets some sinful reactions of disciples to come he lets he neutralizes many of the sinful reactions but in his wisdom he lets some reactions to come to for for glorifying the devotee that to show that in such problems also that devotee is is actually remembering him and also to uh, help people understand show them how to do devotion when you are in problems Okay but that's different from saying that you know allowing Krishna allowing certain things to happen to his pure devotee is different from saying that it's a rule that you know the the, the disciples karma must go Yeah to. yeah it's a rule it's a rule but Krishna interferes in those rules that's all Okay so anyway I'm still having a problem with you know um our placing our faith in dharma shastra over bhakti shastra no uh, bhakti shastras are not in contradiction with dharma shastra that's the whole point and bhakti shastra never replaces dharma shastras that might be a misconception in devotee community but that's not like that if you go to shri vaishnava sampradaya madhva sampradaya even a gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya and that's actually the point there because you see uh dharma shastras are anukul to bhakti shastras are favorable that's why krishna made dharma why he will make dharma whole creation has a purpose the creation has a purpose that we should do devotion to him and then to facilitate that devotion krishna made dharma 
सो इट्स ऑल इन सिंक वी थिंक बाय आर स्मॉल माइंड दैट ओके धर्मा शास्त्र forget them and do bhakti then that means we are favoring we are placing ourselves in a unfavorable situation and we are practicing bhakti and that's basically the problem in now our present society or everywhere in the modern society that's a problem in all spiritual institutions practicing spirituality but no dharma and that's why they are facing so many problems to do devotion because there's no dharma and people are going bonkers there no i i i i do agree that you know dharma is supposed to support our yeah yeah bhakti, yeah right yeah so i don't have a problem with that but you know if there is some um some tension between bhakti and dharma okay right? yeah 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 then bhakti then, then bhakti shastras are always overrule dharma shastras mm-hmm. that's true that's true mm-hmm. you're right at that point of time okay. if there's a tension there between dharma and bhakti okay. then bhakti will overrule dharma okay that's true. anyway this this particular point is still you know not settled for me that you know that krishna enforces that there that there is even this rule among four devotees that um that the guru must accept the karma of the disciple no but then uh, okay fine if if you say it's not a rule then what to we say it's not a rule or what it's a rule but but krishna uh, krishna interferes in those rules for pure devotees that's a good way of saying it's a rule yeah but he interferes in that rule for his pure devotees and that settles isn't it So then, you know, if 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 Krishna interferes with that rule, then is is really not a rule for devotees. You can speak like that. You can speak like that, but that kind of language is not good to say, because it can create complications. Uh, I mean, to say what you are saying, I am saying the same thing. But the point is, that kind of language might create uh, complications because if we say that that rule doesn't apply to pure devotees. so then in the future uh, people will take advantage of this and then they will exploit others on this point uh, so okay, well anyway sincere people will understand <laughs> yeah yeah sincere people can understand <laughs> language matters <laughs> okay if they settle then that's okay <laughs> okay 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 another thing yeah. is um you know one thing i didn't understand is you know when you were saying that um you know devotees they don't want to take service from krishna yeah. to solve their problems you know like they will they having a disease they will go to medicine hmm. you know hmm. and so they, they they'll try to figure it out on their own hmm. and so i'm trying to reconcile that with the fact that um you know as devotees we don't see anything as unconnected from krishna there isn't a sense of independence in any way right from krishna we're completely dependent on him for everything so oh actually say, uh, i got your point actually you know what you're confusing in in uh, you see uh, bhakti santa used to say constitutionally we are dependent but not dispositionally now there's a difference mm-hmm. in that yeah so mm-hmm. so uh, when it comes to disposition when it comes to function then we have to uh, apply a discrimination in what activities i should be dependent and what activities i should not be dependent and take service from him but constitutionally as you are saying because medicine also belongs to krishna everything belongs to krishna body yes. belongs to so that that's how we should put constitutionally we are dependent but not dispositionally okay so dispositionally even even though we know that even medicine is coming from krishna you saying that we should have an attitude let me not disturb you. yeah right absolutely right you got the point Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, I'll, 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 
I'm depending on him, but, you know, like physically, constitutionally, but I am trying to also not disturb him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, another thing was, you know, when you said that devotees, you know, they, they, their mood is to try to serve Krishna only. Not have serve, um, not have Krishna, you know, take care of them. Hmm. And so, devotees don't see Krishna as father. Hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, I'm at our state, or at, at my stage, right, where I am, I mean, I'm not at the position of Brajbasi yet, yeah. you know? If that will ever come, but I'm 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 a struggling sadhaka. Yeah. Right. So at this stage, is it not appropriate for me to see Krishna as father and no, then, and uh, first develop that? Uh, no, actually, f at our stage, it's appropriate to see him as master and we are servant, and not father as a son. In the relationship of father and son, the son expects the father to take care of him. When the relationship of master and servant, the servant knows that he has to take care of the master and serve him. There's a lot of difference between those two relationships. So, so in struggling and as sadhaka, we always go to dasiras because if we try to go in vatsaliras, then we'll just flip off everything and we'll become sense gratifiers in the name of devotion. That's the whole problem there. So, it just seems that, you know, we are also encouraged to see how Krishna is taking care of us also, you know, like a, like a parent takes care of their child, oh. like he's providing, the, he's providing everything for us, you know, we, yeah. we're encouraged to to nourish our sense of love. Yeah, yeah, Krishna you're right. Seeing how he is taking care you're of You're right. Everything. Krishna is taking care of us. We think about that. And that nourishes our devotion. But at the same time, it brings pain to the devotees. That's what Vishwan Chakra Thakur mentions that when always when a devotee thinks that Krishna is taking care of us, they, they, uh, they glorify the quality of Krishna. He's so... He, uh, uh, they glorify this quality, Bhakt Vatsal, he takes care of his devotees. At the same time, they actually vilify, they, they, they blame themselves and they feel pain that how much Krishna has to take care of them and he's giving so much, um, uh, like uh, he's, uh, he, he, he's a cause that Krishna has to do something for him and he's not able to do anything for him. And that gives a lot of pain to him. So, it's, it's so, 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 so when he thinks about this fact that Krishna is taking care of us, it's a mixed feeling. It's a feeling of, okay, it's a, it's a mixed feeling. It's feeling that Krishna is so nice, but there's a feeling that, that it's so uh, sorrow that it's such a pity that he's doing so much for me and I'm not able to do anything for him. Okay, but that seems to be a sentiment of a more... <coughs> Of, of, of a sadhaka who's at a much more <laughs> elevated state. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's how it goes. I mean to say, th th that is a sentiment of a sadhaka who is beginning devotion. Below that, uh, he is not even sadhaka. We are trying to be a sadhaka, I think. so. <laughs> That's where devotion begins. Uh, because devotion is all about uh, no sense gratification. Atmendriya priti vancha tare boli kam. Krishnendriya Preeti Cha Dhare Prem Nam. So when we give pleasure to Krishna, then that is devotion, otherwise everything is lust. So, that, so that's why Chaitanya Prabhu says, we are not even Vaishnavas and we are not even practicing Vaishnavas, we are like Vaishnavas. That's what we are. Well, we have to start somewhere, Prabhu. What, was that? You know, was that? We have to start somewhere. I mean, it's like, you know, if you're not there yet, right, where you can. Where you, where you are a lament that Krishna is taking <laughs> care of you, 
you know, we cannot artificially feel like that. Uh, no, uh, no, no problem. Don't artificially feel like that. But then, but then we have to we have to take knowledge and read Bhagavatam in that perspective. And when we read Bhagavatam in a proper perspective, then we will start getting that feelings. Below that, uh, that's okay. We can continue, but we should think that we are not an idle platform. We have to go forward. Oh yeah. And develop. Yeah. yeah. There's so many that's, ideals. That's, that's, you that's know, the that whole we point. We cannot attain yet. There's so many ideals, but I think that's one of those ideals that oh, Krishna, I'm so sorry. You have to take trouble for me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know, that's that's an ideal, but you know. It's good to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's good that if we come I, to that you know, platform. That's, that's like not even on the horizon yet for me. Anyway. Okay, so, I, yeah, just last thing, I just needed to confirm that, was it, it was Bhakti Vano Thakur, right, who had the hernia? No, 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 Bhakti, 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 no, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthi Thakur had. It was Bhakti Siddhanta? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if, which one of them was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Thank you for Hare so Krishna, much. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Balram Prabhuji, please go ahead, Prabhuji. Yes, yes Mother, thank you. Krishan Prabhu. Yeah. Hare Krishna. One Lord Indra, he as a king, if he wants to take care of the citizens, you know, in, in his abode, etc., mm. then he, if somehow he has to protect himself and his uh, follower, you know, his kid mm. and kin, in. Mm. In the in the war in the higher planetary system, so that's why he brought Vishwarup to do all this and get mm. the Narayana Kavacha. Mm. So I, a couple things in my I had a couple questions, Prabhu. One is why did he really kill? Um, that means uh, suppose if somebody is against dharma mm. and then is not helping him, so he killed him, right? So if he kills, that means there is no reaction for that. Now that's one thing. And then the second thing is, oh, why did he f- um, really, if it is not uh, not supposed to be killed, then he really committed a crime? No, actually, so, no, actually, it's not like that because even Vishnu uh, doesn't want to kill Brahmanas, even if they are sinful, even if they are doing adharma. Because, uh, and that happened, I mean, when Kaliuka came, uh, so many demons were born as Brahmanas. And Vishnu told that, uh, well, uh, I cannot kill them because simply because they are Brahmanas. Go Brahmana Hitayache. Dharma forbids killing Brahmanas even if he is going against Dharma. So Brahmanas cannot be killed. Like Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama did a stupid thing, uh, the worst thing, you know. <coughs> Uh, Krishna said, well, you know, you have to kill him, but then he cannot be killed. That's all. So then they devised, you know, they cut his hairs and all what, whatever they did. So yeah, similarly... Why, why did Indra do this, Prabhu? Nee, so, similarly, this? so similarly, Twashta, he was actually, he was actually giving uh, offerings to demons and also demigods, which he was, he was not supposed to do. Now, he was doing Adharma at that point of time. So, Indra, of course, he should not have killed him because he is a Brahmana and you cannot kill him. But, but Bhagavatam says that, that he was doing such a thing in such a crisis. That's the whole point. Already demigods are lost. Demons have won. And now he is there and they are doing yagya to make demigods powerful and he is doing such, a, such an act. And in this crisis, he is making demons powerful. And that in Indra's mind was actually unpardonable offense. And of course, Bhagavatam says he got really angry with, with that with that whole incident, and he killed him. So, according to Madhvacharya, he didn't he didn't transgress dharma, because in dharma it is said brahmanas can be killed in certain certain situations. It's not that you can never kill them. Certain situations they can be killed. Just like, for example, I'll tell you. Uh, for example, this situation, Kurukshetra. Like they're all Brahmanas, you know, Dronacharya, Bhishma, and all this. And Krishna said, kill them. And Arjuna's whole point was, they are my guru, they are my relatives, they are of higher caste. How can I kill them? They are Brahmanas. They are Brahmanas and also guru. Krishna says, you're a fool. You kill them. Because why? Because in a situation, Dharma Shastra says, in a situation where 
द होल वर्ल्ड इज एट क्राइसिस द होल वर्ल्ड विल कम इन अ प्रॉब्लम एट दैट पॉइंट यू कैन ऑल्सो किल ऑफ ब्राह्मण सो एटवस्टा इज डूइंग अ समथिंग वेर द होल वर्ल्ड विल गो इन एन आर्की there will be no heavens there will be no gods and the earth there will be no uh, no earth and there will be chaos in the whole world whole rhythm whole cosmic law will get disturbed because krishna has put demigods to to actually maintain cosmic law so everything will go upside side down so in this situation he was right to kill tvashta by the same time because he was a brahmana he you had to had sins because uh, dharma shastra says if you kill brahmana you have to take sins so okay he said fine i'll take it So for a devotee, Prabhu, what should we do? Do we need to follow dharma or sarva dharma? <laughs> <laughs> sarva dharma means you don't have to be attached to dharma. Krishna never said you should abandon dharma. Otherwise, the whole purpose of Krishna's incarnation goes to dustbin. You know, dharma sansthapna arthaya. Yeah. So then, so this Prabhupada says in the purport. Prabhupada says abandon all speculated religions. Prabhupada mentions there. speculated religions have to be abandoned not religious principle which are said by scriptures okay yeah got it thank you bro hare krishna hare krishna thank hare go pravin govin prabhu ji please go ahead with your question prabhu i think we yeah pravin prabhu hare krishna माइट है because uh, because a child is dependent on the parents so the sin transfers from the person who is dependent to the person who is actually maintaining him that how, that's how sin goes just like a smoke goes from lower to higher sin goes from lower to higher okay, and uh, so uh, then uh, what about blessings because there was a case uh, of one of my friends he said that uh, whenever somebody came to their house mm. uh, their parents would always serve them with prasadam mm. and so he was he was traveling for his job he was a maintenance engineer and he was travel places around the world and he said wherever i went i always had good prasadam to eat so he was considering that as a blessing that you know because of his parents feeding everyone who came to the house yeah yeah yeah, yeah bless kind of he was reaping it yeah so blessings blessings are like water they go from up to down sins are like smoke they go from down to up okay now i'm clear okay got it thank you prabhu thank you krishna hey krishna prabhu thank you so much Jyoti Mata ji, please go ahead with your question. She is not there. I think Lalitaangi Mata ji. Yeah, Lalitaangi Mata ji, please go ahead, Mata ji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji, Dhanot Pranam. Thank you so much uh, for a very enlightening and introspective class. So, uh, my question is about Narayana Kavacha and how. i mean uh, uh, we saw that how it is request the requesting protection from the lord but uh, the irony is the person who taught it uh, was not protected by that that vishuru had no. to be killed yeah yeah, yeah. by uh, indra so i am just wondering if you can share some light on that well uh, i think narayan kavach uh, they got it from vishuru isn't it Uh, I no. think so. If anybody else, Ryan Kavach. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Can I share the screen with you? Was that? Yes. Yeah. Just the chapter. Okay. Anyway, if you if you know that, uh, anybody knows that, I don't know, but um, Vishnu was supposed to be doing that yoga, and 
ओके यस फ्रॉम विश्व रूप ओनली आप बलराम प्रसाद प्रभु से ओके फाइन सो या इफ इफ नारायण कावच ही गॉट ही गॉट फ्रॉम विश शेयरिंग दिस प्रोटेक्शन फ्रॉम दिस स्टील एंड दिस इज दिस इज सिक्स लेवल मंत्रा आफ्टर डिक्टेशन वन मस्ट ऑफ अ प्रेयर्स इट्स एंड दिस इज इन से एनीथिंग नारायण कावच लीड अप डेमी गॉट्स इंक्वायर्ड अबाउट द हार्मोनियस फ्रॉम विश्व रूप या Yeah, he got it from Vishnu. Fine, it's done. So yeah, so he got from Vishnu. So your question is, Vishnu was not saved, huh? Isn't it? Let me tell you, Mata Ji. Yeah, yeah, yes, Prabhu Ji. Uh, yeah, if you can. Well, I mean to say, uh, um, he gave Narayan Kavach, but he couldn't be saved. So often it happens, you know. Person who brings nectar, he cannot drink it. <laughs> it happens like that. Somebody else takes it. He uh, he knew Ranayan Kavach and he gave it to uh, to demigods. These rishis, you know what is the rishis? They they can see through these mantras, and that's the meaning of rishis. So uh, he probably might have been taught Ranayan Kavach through his father Atvasta. and he got this and he it was realized in this he could see the power of this mantra but you know what rishis but rishis don't use this mantras for themselves they never do that because because that will amount to selfishness so uh, and that's a rule if if they get some power they are not supposed to use that power for themselves it's it's also an astrology anybody is expert astrologer is not supposed to see his own astrology that's adharma that's sin and it's same with all the powers so that is why he couldn't uh, he didn't use it and you know he, you know when uh, so when christ was crucified so people started saying you know well he has saved so many people now why doesn't he save himself uh, so then then christ said uh, uh, so then christ said yes i, I don't i don't want i don't want to save myself because that will be an act of selfishness in the eyes of god so that's the point with rishi they cannot use this powers for themselves for their own protection otherwise they lose it they lose it instantly so he didn't do that thank you prabhu ji wow that's so wonderful okay <laughs> thank you prabhu hari krishna Anand Vilas Prabhu ji uh, please go ahead with your question Prabhu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Prabhu ji Hare Krishna um uh, this verse uh, raso vamapsu kaunteya I, i struggle little bit understanding this because part of it is what and rest is light and which is easy to understand when we say ras it is it taste only or does it mean the basis of life also right like, रसम अपसु कौन थे सी दिस दिस लाइन हैज मैनी मीनिंग्स टू इट एक्सटर्नल मीनिंग इज ऑफ कोर्स टेस्ट लिटरल मीनिंग ओके टेस्ट ऑफ वाटर बट वी नो वाटर इज टेस्टलेस सो देन वॉट कृष्णा इज सेंग सो देन दिस मीन्स इफ 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 द इंटरप्रिटेशन कॉन्ट्रोडिक्ट विद एम्पेरिकल ऑब्जर्वेशन then that that thing has to be reinterpreted that's a rule of sanskrit so that that means here ras will indicate something else not taste because <laughs> observe empirically it's tasteless so then it becomes krishna becomes wrong so here ras what does that ras means so here ras means as you said uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the vitality which water carries to support life as you said just one meaning is this so i am i am the taste i am i am the ras in water the the water is life by the way veda says apah jeevanam we can live without food but we cannot live without water of course uh, vedas also say an jeevanam food is life water is life so in that context rasa means here the energy and the vitality which water carries one meaning another meaning here which is a esoteric meaning is rasam apsu kontya uh, apsu water also indicates um let's see water also indicates um ecstasy 
devotion. In 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 bhakti shastras, water indicates devotion. Uh, so just like water flows, devotion flows, isn't it? Uh, and that is why it is said, "Ai to ki aprati hata." And Prabhupada says, "Just like a stream keeps on flowing, devotion keeps on flowing like water. It cannot be stopped." So rasam absu kante. Krishna says, "The ras, the ecstasy you feel in devotion, that is me." The pleasure you feel in devotion, that is me. So that's the internal meaning of Raso Am Apsu Kante. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, there are some questions in the chat box, Prabhu. Can I read those questions, Prabhu? Yeah. We have time. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, this Svarkalok is a lok of Punya Ma. Can a pure devotee live in Svarkalok or is Indra Mukta? Yeah, why not? I mean to say, so what about, no, what about Brahma? Brahma is also in this material world. They are all pure devotees. In Swarga, there can be pure devotees. Shiva is also there in Kalash. So they are all, Varun, Agni, Bayu is a pure devotee. Madhva Sampradaya, if you say Bayu is not a pure devotee, they will kill you. <laughs> they will just chop your head. Bayu is there in Swarga. Garod, he also there. there. Narad Muni is traveling all around the world. He is a pure devotee. So it doesn't matter, you know. Um, Hare Krishna, what is the benediction for women given as Indra has distributed sin to them? As yes. here in this verse, we see water is pure even though it's given the sin by Indra. Same way, what's the benediction for women? It's there in the previous verse, isn't it? Thus, previous to this verse, woman was given benediction that she can enjoy sex, sexual desires anytime she wants. That's what the benediction was given, even while in, in pregnancy. And you said Vishnu is the brother of Vaman. Can you please elaborate, Prabhuji? Well, Vaman Leela happened, and Vishnu came as Vaman Dev, as son of Aditi and Kashyap. And in that sense, he becomes younger brother because because the first progeny of the first son of Aditya and Kashyap is Indra and all demigods. And then Vaman came. So, in that whole sequence, he becomes a younger brother, Upendra. Monika Mataji has one question. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji Dhanavad Pranam. Thank you for the wonderful class. Many doubts got cleared. I have a question. Material people or sinful people like politicians, celebrities donate money for social welfare works um, or, or food distribution. If the money is earned by sinful activities or illegally, will the people who take that donated money or take food which is distributed by them by that money, will they get the bad karma of the donor? No, if they offer to Krishna, then everything is over, you know. And then he can distribute. Otherwise, if it's not offered to Krishna, anyway, if it, even if it's not sinful, it becomes sinful because it's not offered. So anyway, everything is sinful which is not offered. So, that's why you have to offer and then distribute. Almost we have, I see one more raised hand here. Taruni Radha Dasi. Prabhuji, please go ahead. Radha. I'm going to look at this. Taruni Radha Dasi, she's. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much for the wonderful class. Um, Prabhuji, my question is you were expressing like how killing a Brahmana is, um, you know, we, one will incur sin according to the Dharma Shastras. Mm. Um, we were with uh, King the Mahabharata war, right, by Drupad, uh, Drupad's son, right, the Shiduna. So does the Shiduna also incur sin uh, because he's killing the Brahmana who's the, uh, who's Ramacharya? No. Or is it like, you know, because he's acting according to Krishna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's acting according to Krishna, that's why he is not incurring okay. sins. And this, by the way, this war was fought for the benefit of the world, and Krishna said, You fight, you know. And it's not no sinful. So that was the whole point there. So it's an exception, right? It's a big exception because it's, they are all acting according to Krishna as well. Otherwise, at any cost, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you'll get sins. Yeah, you have to partake sins. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhu. Um, uh, Prahan Prabhuji, please go ahead with your question. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, because dharma is called selfish interest, that is also a speculation. Dharma is okay. only for Krishna. Oh. Yeah. So, but you say other dharmas... Yeah, 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 I told. Abandon all speculated dharmas. And spe- yeah, but we don't, think of, we don't think of all these other dharmas as speculative. As yeah. It, because speculative implies... You know, something that comes out of one's own imagination. Yeah, so so that is imagination. Bhagavatam begins with that. Uh, performing dharma for some benefits, that is simply an imagination. It's never, is not there in Vedas. It's an imagination of philosophers. It's an imagination of rishis who were... What about Karmakanda? Karma yeah, yeah, yeah Karmakanda is imagination of... of uh, who is that Karmakanda? Uh, who, who gave Karmakanda? Jamini. It's imagination. It's not there in Vedas. It's imagination of Jamini who is imposing his imagination on Vedas. And he's saying there is a Karma Kanda section in Vedas. But then all Vaishnavacharya says it is his imagination that there is Karma Kanda section in Vedas. There is no Karma Kanda in Vedas. It's only devotion. But the, yeah, but the idea was the, uh, the section of Vedas he used to actually substantiate his karma kanda that section later came to be known as karma kanda section but actually there is no karma kanda in that okay which section are you referring to uh, this is uh, this is so vedas are divided into four parts brahmana yeah. Ar- aranakyas and uh, yeah. yeah for so so the first two sections of vedas brahmanas and samhitas uh-huh. Those and Brahmana Samhitas and also Aranika, first three sections, they are Karma Kanda sections because why? Because Jamini he didn't use Upanishads to actually support his theory of Karma Kanda because, because you can't use Upanishads to support the theory of Karma Kandas because Upanishads go anti to Karma Kanda's uh, theory. So he used the first three sections and he, he used his own imagination to come up with this philosophy of Karma Kanda and then he came to people, he said, Hey, look, you know. This theory is in the first three sections of Vedas, but it was not there. And then people thought that that section is trying to teach Karma Kanda, but that was not the case. He was imposing his own imagination on the section. And so, so Ramanucharya, Madhvacharya, they came later and they said, Hey, you know, Jamini, this, there is no Karma Kanda section. It is his imagination imposed on that section. Those sections are also talking about devotion. Oh my God. Yeah. This is what... <laughs> this is so. Every time you come on, you say something else revolutionary. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> 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 
Uh, yeah, it's it's there. I mean, to say people, people, it's there in the society. It's there in all. Uh, there, that's okay. That's fine. I mean, to say in uh, so so publicly we say like that, and that is fine enough. But uh, but internally we have to understand. Internally we have to understand. There is no Karmapanda section. Externally we can say that that's okay because that's promoted in the society. It's like that. It's being said. Prabhupada also said that. Uh, but if we really go internally and understand, then we can understand there is no Karmakanda section. And Prabhupada later explains that, although he says there is Karmakanda section, Gyanakanda section, but later in Bhagavatam he explains there is no Karmakanda, there is no Gyanakanda. And that's obvious because Krishna says in Gita, Vedaisha Sarved Aham Eva Vedyo. By all Vedas I am to be known. So then Prabhupada says, well, if all Vedas Krishna is to be known, then where, then where is Karmakanda section? There is no Karmakanda section. So Prabhupada speaks of all these intricacies in Gita. Publicly we say this, otherwise people people say, come on, you are... So to put it, think simply, okay, Karmakanda section, Jnana Kanda, this and Bhakti, okay, fine. But really, the case is the other way around. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, Prabhuji, then in Bhagavad Gita, it says that one should not be, you know, get... Um the flowery and yeah 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 that that verse is there tri gunne vishaye veda anis tri guna bhava arjuna ved vatrata partha pushpitam vacha isn't it that verse so but but there uh, krishna is saying uh, that explanation is don't be deluded by the flowery language of vedas why krishna is saying this because vedas is not talking about karma kanda section but vedas uh, this is a very intricate question See, Vedas, any, any stuti is there in Vedas, like for Rigved, suppose. Suppose if you read Agni Sukta or Varun Sukta. In the end, it might be written, that, so it is written that, that this Varun Sukta and Agni Sukta, uh, if you read this, the result of this is heavenly planets. It's there. It is there. That's no doubt. But what Gemini did is, Gemini said you should read it for attaining heavenly planets. But Vedas are not saying that. Vedas are not saying that you should read it to attain heavenly planets. They are saying if you read it, the result is heavenly planets. But Upanishads are saying you should not read them to attain heavenly planets. It is the glorification of that stuti. Just like holy name. We say holy name by chanting holy name. You can get, you can get liberation. You can get all results of you know, uh, religious principles. You can get everything. But we don't chant for getting them. So in Vedas... This, all these results are glorification of those phrases. But that's not the goal of those phrases. That's the whole idea. So, flowery language, Krishna says, don't be entangled in the flowery language. Don't think that these tutis are directed to attain the, the heavenly planets. Don't do that. Otherwise, you'll be entangled. Just see them as the praises and glorification and chant these tutis to praise Krishna. Which is meant, that's what they're meant for. So that's why Krishna says, uh, uh, don't be entangled in those. So, so there is no karma kanda there. Karma kanda is a speculated, imaginative, nonsense philosophy. And that's why Nartam Das Thakur says, karma kanda, jnana kanda, keval vishayi rabhanda. It's all poison. So that's how those verses have to be understood. Wow. That's so amazing. So amazing. Yeah. Okay, and also, you know, another take on, um, you know, switching topics, another take on just pure water, right? Yeah. Well, for one thing, I, I just, I need a little help with understanding better. Um, you say that how to reconcile our experience of the tastelessness of water with Krishna's statement that he is the taste of water. So one answer you gave is that by by taste he means Krishna means the the vitality yeah. that's afforded. That's one interpretation. Yeah. And then another I mean I don't know why he would call vitality taste. For one thing. No, no, actually, he, no, no, wait, 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 wait. He, he's not calling taste. The translation we are putting as taste because that's okay. Acharya is putting. Prabhupada also writes his taste. But rasa, technically rasa means vitality in Sanskrit dictionary. It, it means taste. It also technically means the essence of life. That's also rasa means technically. So, 
so but uh, but you might but you might ask a valid question your question is valid why krishna is leaving people in such a ambiguity uh, so i mean to say so i mean to say for if he wanted to say i, I, I am the vitality of water he could have used some other word why only rasa why on, which which can be interpreted as taste also that's a very valid question why is speaking in such a ambiguous language where we have to think you know this rasa is not taste and this is that vitality why is doing that he is doing on a purpose because he is saying i am the taste of water and people will not experience that taste am i right because water is tasteless yeah so he is trying to say that people are because people cannot taste the taste of water he is trying to say that actually a uh, normal ordinary man he is not connected to me that's why he cannot see me everywhere that's his whole point there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> okay yeah that was the point that i need to clarify yeah 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 you know another take on this is you know i i heard from one maharaj who was explaining this thing to because he had the experience i think maybe it was in the Himalayan mountains or something he had the experience of pure water right and there he understood this verse because it was the first time he understood he experienced the taste of water because it was pure because of where he got that water from you know and so he understood that the water had taste when it was uncontaminated by unmixed with anything you know when there was the purity i think uh, the... i think it's all very subjective language isn't it <laughs> mm. okay 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 so... <laughs> okay just, just just one last thing for boot is um you know you mentioned the list of items that were pure so <laughs> one of them was water and that's why we use that to purify mm. like atman yeah yeah so on. yeah yeah so 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 then Therefore, technically, we should be able to use honey, milk, ghee, right? Mm -hmm. To if we if we drop a if we put a drop of any of those other things on Ashman cup, that should also purify the cup, also, no? Yeah, I mean to say, honey, ghee, and milk they are they are used to purify the items. By the way, if we, if we wash your vessels with honey, it becomes pure. It is said. If, if you apply the honey on your body, do you become pure? If you eat it, you become pure. Technically. And therefore, too, since a pure devotee was on the list, hmm. then he should be able to purify the cup just by holding it, no? <laughs> that yeah, that can happen if he's a pure devotee, but uh, I don't know how it works. But yeah, <laughs> that technically it should be like that. Okay. <laughs> Krishna Prabhu, there are few comments in the chat box. So I don't know. Do you have time, Prabhu Ji? Or yeah, I can read the comment command i think prabhupada repeatedly talks of, of talks of the yoga karma yoga dhyana jnana jnana in terms of devotional service in fact i was thinking the same thing is repeated so what's the difference this is a question by the way i don't have this question she also has raised her hand actually tiffany mataji mataji please go ahead mataji Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept Hare my Krishna. humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, I, just going back to the Karmakanda question <laughs> that um, you were just discussing with uh, Gaurangi Mataji, we have also been told many times that the Vedas, the different sections of the Vedas were written for people with, with different consciousness or different levels of consciousness as well. Mm. So how... I'm, I'm still, I'm still really surprised by the karma kanda comment that it, that it is. Actually, it is yeah, you know what, karma kanda and karma yoga are very different. 
Karma Kanda is a speculation by Jaimini. Karma Yoga is there in Vedas and Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga are there. As karma Yoga, so first three sections what Jaimini said is Karma Kanda, it's not Karma Kanda, it's Karma Yoga by the way and he speculated to Karma Kanda. That's what he did. So Karma Yoga is there, uh, who says it's not there but at the same time Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Jnana Yoga, they are all devotion. Why? Because Karma Yoga, we are trying to connect with Krishna through activities. Bhakti Yoga, we are trying to connect Krishna with emotions. Jnana Yoga, we are trying to connect Krishna with knowledge. We are trying to serve Krishna with actions, emotions and knowledge and service is Bhakti. So that's why all the Vedas are talking only about devotion. Like that. Okay, but so you're saying that the, the separations or the different levels are in regard to yoga? In regard no, no, actually, ac actually there, there are no different levels. There are different uh, modes of expression of service. Uh, okay. So when, when service is expressed in terms of action, that is called karma yoga. And service is expressed in emotions, it's bhakti yoga. And expressed in jnana, it's, it's, it's jnana yoga, in knowledge. So that way, if you understand, then that's a perfect understanding of Vedic literatures. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you so much, yes, Prabhuji, for clearing that up. I appreciate it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. But Prabhu, you, you wouldn't say that that there's karma yoga, um, one way of, of approaching Krishna is... No, no, no. To no, no. A gradual procession from mm. progression from karma yoga to jnana yoga to bhakti yeah. yoga. You wouldn't. Yeah, that's, we. That's, not there. Uh, that's there. That's also there. Uh, if we understand from a different capacity, that's you see. You see, that's another question. It is there, but it's not there also. Why? Because. Because uh, this progression of karma yoga, jnana yoga, dhyana yoga, and bhakti yoga, this progression is due to. So it's not due to because karma yoga is lower and bhakti yoga is higher. It's due to because of the consciousness of the practitioner. Because of his consciousness, he sees first karma yoga. Because of the consciousness of the practitioner, if the consciousness of the practitioner is very low, then he has to first come to actions to serve God because he can't, man he can't control his emotions. He, can't, he doesn't have knowledge. When he advances, then he comes to jnana yoga, then he is able to... Uh, get, get knowledge because by acting properly his mind becomes controlled and they get knowledge he can yoga and then Gidhyana yoga concentration and then he develops emotions for God so this this whole stratification is because of the consciousness of the person and not inherent per se in those processes but if a person is elevated for him all the processes are same level they are actually same that's why Krishna says Sankhya Yoga Prithak Bala Prabhadantina Pandita Krishna is only child say that karma yoga and jnana yoga are different and different levels. Childish people. So for childish people it might be there. Because he can't manipulate and he can't use those things. But in and of itself, they are all at same level. They are all one. There is no difference. That's what Krishna says. So today, in fact, in the morning I was discussing the same verse. Where Sayat Meka Buddhi Ekaha Kuru Nandana. Krishna says all are one. So it's like that. Yes, actually, I've heard this before, this this take on it before, too, but, you know, not, uh-huh, anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you so much. Prabhuji, I'm blessed. Prabhuji is asking a question. I think Sarva Dharma means including the Varnashrama Dharma, too? No, no, no. Sarva Dharma means speculative dharmas. Varnashrama Dharma is not speculation. It's there mentioned in the Vedas. 